Hey there, and thank you for joining me on yet another part of the You Can Be Anything podcast skill series. Last two weeks in part 15 of the podcast skill series, we talked about how you can answer this question, tell me about yourself. Today in part 16, I would like for us to talk, we're going to stay within the interview process. So I would like for us to talk about other questions that are common during interview processes and how we can tackle such questions, right? An example, the question or the kind of question we'll be talking about today is a tell me about a time when question. So these questions are referred to as behavioral questions, also situational questions, because what is the interviewer trying to do? They're trying to understand how you're going to behave if you encounter a certain kind of situation. It doesn't matter what. So today I would like for us to tackle how to answer these questions and again remember this is just my tip I am no expert I am no hiring expert I am no human resource expert but I put these things together to so I'm using my experiences right I'm using how the journey was like for me when I transitioned into a new career and how I went through these things so remember this is my point of view so when we talk of behavioral questions, situational questions during interviews, what are we referring to or how, what is the best way to tackle these questions? When I prepare or when I am preparing for an interview before I got to understand how best to answer these questions, I will normally use the STAR framework. The STAR framework is a framework that has been put together by the HR, by the hiring experts to help guide interviewees like you and I to tackle that question in a better way. And what does this STAR stand from? So STAR is an acronym for Situation, Task, Action and Results. This is a great acronym. It works really well. But I'm going to talk to you today based on my experience on how I tackle it, how I use the star to tell my story. And so remember, we want to always respond to these behavioral questions in the form of a story because you're trying to say something that would stick. You're trying to say something in a way that will stick in the interview, in the interviewer's ears, right? Or head, not ears. So again, when we talk of behavioral questions, what are we talking about? It could be, tell me about the time when you failed. It could be, tell me about the time when you exceeded expectations. It could be, tell me about the time when you had to deal with a difficult colleague. Tell me about the time when you had to go against your manager's directions and do things the way you thought or believe or your instinct told you that that was the best way to do it. Tell me about the time when you had to do a job that went against your beliefs or your principles in life. These are all questions that could come up and the goal here is not to trick you. The goal is just to see how you will behave in certain situations because these people they use these questions to kind of understand us um, apart from the technical side of us, I want to understand our personalities a little bit better. So that is why they use such questions during interview processes. So today, because I want to give you an example of what I did or how I tackled one of these questions during an interview process, I would like for us to talk about let's talk about one of the questions and I'll give you the response I gave about two and a half years ago during an interview process when the hiring manager asked me hey Solange tell me about the time when you failed so this is what I said again this is my point of view this is what I thought worked for me and why do I say it worked for me it worked for me because even after I got hired this hiring manager still use this story as a talking point whenever I came across him in the office, right? He will st still remember, which means whatever I told him, it stuck on there. So I'll bet you that, to me, that is what uh, good, tell me, about a, tell me about a time when question is, when you're able to tell a story that sticks, 
Right. So when he asked me this question, um, at that time, again, I had prepared for different kinds of scenarios. I, I had even prepared for it. Tell me about a time when you failed question. But when he asked me that question, something happened. For some reason, I thought of a completely different situation, a completely something out of what I had planned to talk about. And this is what I said. So I went back to my life as a receptionist. At some point in my life, I was a receptionist in a care home. So for some reason, that experience just came to my mind. So this is what I said when he said, Solange, tell me about the time when you failed my response. So when I worked as a receptionist in one of the care homes in California, there was a day that the boss's PA did not show up to work. She had an emergency and she was not able to make it on time. She was not able to make it to work on that day at all. Being a receptionist, yes, I had seen the boss, I would see the boss come in and go out, but I've never really had contact with him. He has never really had to delegate work to me. Probably he will go through another person before he gets to me. So I did not have a, like a work, I had a work relationship with him, but he does, he never really delegated work to me. There was always somebody in between. So on this fateful day, I am at my desk in the morning at about 9.30 a.m. taking my calls as usual, making appointments for the, um, the people in the homes and just doing receptionist work, right? And he, I get a call from the boss's office and he's like, hey Solange, I will need you to order some lunch for my guests. I have a few people coming into the office today and I would like for us to have lunch together. So get the company card, order some food, other this, 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 and this kind of sandwich. I was like, okay, great, I'm going to do that, thank you. And he was like, okay, make sure you order it at this time so that it gets here fresh and nice for us to have lunch. And I said, yes, I got you, thank you. I wrote it on a little sticky note and I put it on top of my computer. And while there, I did what I was doing, I did not, for some reason, it skipped my mind. It only occurred to me when it was like five minutes to the actual lunch time. And that came across because the person that was arranging the lunch room for them had called the front desk to ask if the sandwiches had been delivered. This was like five minutes before they started eating. I bet you that I was all confused. So I had failed to order it. I had completely forgotten. So what I did was I ran back into the lunchroom. The boss was there. They had just finished with the first session of the meeting. They were having snacks, having some fresh coffee. So I stepped up to him and I first thing, I apologized. I said, I am so sorry. This kicked my mind and I, I forgot to order the sandwiches. But what I can do is, since it is my lunchtime now, I have somebody else covering the front desk. I am going to run out to this local vendor and buy the sandwiches. He was like, okay, just do what you have to do. These people need to eat. In less than 15 minutes, about 10 minutes, I was there and I came back. So I took my car, took the company car, and went off and I bought the sandwiches and I came. They ate. Unfortunately, yes, some people, they had to eat late or maybe I think their break was extended a little bit because they had to wait for the food. Again, it was a, an indoor meeting, so they did not have like a 30, 45 minutes lunch break. It was just a sandwich break or so. So that kind of delayed it a little bit, but the sandwiches got delivered. At the end of the day, I walked up to my boss again and I apologized. I told him that I'm not sure what happened, but of course, the next time I get a task like this, especially if it is out of my normal day-to-day -day work, I will not only do use a sticky note to put it on my computer, but I'll actually set it as an alarm on my phone or even on my computer so that I can get a sound and get a uh, notification like he ordered the sandwiches and he said that's fine to me that was a bit weird because that was my first encounter like real encounter work encounter with the boss and to think that when you're a receptionist you're hoping that someday you will move up to the higher level right and I was already failing like this so to me that was a lesson learned the lesson I learned was that I need to get better at I need to get better at 
reminding myself, especially when I get delegated tasks that are not in my regular realm of work, I need to be able to remind myself about it better in a better way, not just with sticky notes, maybe like really sounds on my phone or the computer itself. So it sticks out and sings it out to me. So I learned my lesson from there and yeah. So you can see this short, this story that I have told again, because I'm talking and doing a little bit of explanation within, it might have gone above two minutes, two to three minutes, or nothing, it went about three minutes. We want to make sure that our responses, our stories stay within that time frame, two to three minutes. Do not make it too long. So what did I say in this story? In this story, I was able to bring out a context, right? In which I was going to replace the bus's PA and other launched something that was out of my realm of work but um and that is the context so what what next so what is the next thing that happens in here there is a task the task was for me the action sorry was for me to so i had failed to do that and what was my action the action was for me to run out first apologize to the boss make sure that i acknowledge that i have failed and try to remedy the situation ASAP. So that is what I did and I ran out and I bought the sandwiches. So to me, you've seen the context, you've seen the action that I took and what were the results? Yes, the guests finally had their lunch and my lesson is I, again, I never, since then, I've never really used sticky notes as my only reminder mode, especially if it is a task that is out of my day-to-day -day work. So whatever kind of story you're going to tell, whatever, question you're responding you want to make sure that you stay within this framework because it helps that story to stay in the mind of the interviewer it gives them it makes them know that hey you know what you're talking about there was a situation there was an action there was a result and there were lessons learned so you want to make sure that your story stays within this framework and so use this framework to practice the different kinds of questions just practice and know you never know which one they're going to ask you in the interview i wish we knew we'll prepare for those specific ones right but sometimes you walk in there most of the time so always you walk in there you don't know what question they're going to ask you so you just have to be ready and that's why it is important to keep the framework in mind so whatever question you ask you're just fitting it into that framework and telling them so i hope that this helps you as you prepare for your interviews i hope that this helps you as whether you are a starter i know my target audience are people who are transitioning because that is my story and that's why i decided to target people who are transitioning from one career to another or fresh graduates people who don't have a lot of experience already in the workforce so i thank you all so much i hope you find value in this and I'll see you next week in part 17. Meanwhile, be good to each other. Thanks and bye-bye.